Ministry PvP. This is Hex on an eviction server. And this is my return to Serpulo. So Ministry version 7 has been out for like two months now, something like that. Uh, so knowing that there was going to be two planets, I rigged it up to have one Serpulo server and one Ericure server. And since everything in Ericure was new, and I was going to pay all my attention to that to make sure that it was viable. Uh, and what I knew about Serpulo at the time was that early flares were going to be terribly broken. And the best fix that I could come up with quickly to let things be was to tune down the unit damage a lot by like 50%. Uh, so that prevents early flare rushes from being completely broken. You've, you've got to put down scatters. The scatters are good at taking care of them. And then I left things to sit and paid all my attention to Eric here. So this is like the first actual game I've played coming back in two months. All my stuff is rusty. I don't fully remember my build order. Uh, if my build order needs to change for some reason, I don't know it yet. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna go to my usual trying to get the six silicon smelters with an air blast early. That worked well before, then that'll probably be fine. It's a really heavily populated game too. There was like, you know, more than 10 players. using up all my coal, so I've got to sort of hack noodle together to get a little bit of graphite. And waiting for my flares to come out. Since flares are very similar to daggers as far as damage potential, you might as well make them. They're a lot faster. You don't use them to actually fight something that shoots back, you only use them to fight stuff that doesn't shoot back. So the hit point difference or armor or whatever, doesn't matter. Hmm. There's someone down there to my right, but I don't think that's one of the good players. And I've got more time than I usually do from opening up the second hex. Like, nor in a normal game at this point, then I would be already in my next hex and laying down the silicon. Uh, instead, I'm setting up the, the scatters to protect myself from any flares that might come in. They, they are really, really flimsy to even, you know, a couple scatters. So even like just the spawn three scatters uh, with the nucleus, uh, that'll keep you alive. And it's more a matter of if they're gonna hit any of your economy stuff. And also with the new B-key rebuilding feature, losing infrastructure doesn't hurt nearly as much as it used to. You used to need polys to rebuild anything with sort of a reasonable amount of attention. And that's just not the case anymore. You can B-key and bring all sorts of stuff back. So making flares first instead of daggers is using more silicon, so I don't have as much silicon at this point in the game as I'm used to. I almost want to build just like a second mechanical drill uh, starter schematic of silicon, but you know, can't really do it. These are slow, blah. So there are a number of things that the people who do play Serbula a lot have complained about that I am on the lookout for. I don't really take anybody's word for it as far as balancing stuff goes without seeing something for myself. I just sort of take that as a, okay, I'll put that on the list of things I'm looking for. And one of those things is this autofill. There is some sort of uh, client 
you know, mod thing, whatever. That adds a lot of PvP utilities. You know, you get messages when they're making units, or how many units they have, or other things. It does things. And one of the things that it does is it automates the process of removing items from a core and putting them into buildings that have capacity for them, uh, which includes industry buildings and uh, turrets. And so the thing that people have been doing is just you slap about a bunch of turrets with no logistics concern whatsoever and then the autofill puts the ammo in it and keeps it supplied for consistent fighting. So that's something I've been looking for to see in practice and you know is it so good that it's broken or is it you know reasonably easy to get around? I've played some more games since this and there's a number of things that is either Oh, I think actually that's what's broken, and it's not necessarily autofill completely itself, or, you know, has a pretty easy catch. So one of the things that you can do to wreck autofilling is just attack more than one place at the same time. Uh, the player ship can only be on one parcel. So if you've got two autofilling turret farms uh, that are far enough apart, then the player can only keep one of them going. Uh, another thing is bait dots. So those turrets will shoot at dots, but not actually damage them. That is probably not what should happen, but that's the current state of the game as designed by the game designer. So you can empty out those turrets with dots if they're close enough to territory that you can build it. And that's pretty amusing. Uh, there's some fort designs that people have been using that also have turrets that range into buildable space in neighboring parcels that you can waste their ammo in a similar way. A uh, second major concern is it looks like swarmers with surge ammo is, from a balance perspective, completely broken. Uh, it has a huge amount of killing power, and I believe that that's sort of a consequence of both having a very high rate of fire and having these area of effect lightning strikes. Uh, so each bullet, of which there's a lot, does two lightning strikes that hit everything within a certain radius. So if you have just a handful of swarmers, then the rate of fire puts down enough of that area of effect lightning DPS that it is, you know, it is taking down any unit on approach that is less than T4 before it even, you know, gets to the turret. That may also be an interaction with uh, what I've done to try and balance the flares out, which is the uh, reduced unit damage because that affects all the units so using unit weapons to actually destroy things is not very effective at this point but strangely it looks like the most effective attacking weapon is using air unit crash damage which feels stupid and wrong but I've played enough games that that seems to be the primary thing that works for taking cores. So you mass up a bunch of flares, zeniths, horizons, whatever, and you move them as close to a target core as possible. And then you just let them sit there. And if there is enough of them, they're coming from enough directions, depending on you know how many swarmers or whatever is there defending. If those units can get to over or close to the core that when they die they will crash and damage it and because individual core health is so low relative to these crash damage numbers uh, that's a way to kill cores and then you kill the core and you're killing all the buildings that are in that parcel so any fort that was trying to protect it is gone uh, shields don't protect from the crash damage there isn't really anything 
Uh, you can try and use tsunamis, but tsunamis only really work against one unit at a time. So if it's a mass of flares or horizons or zeniths, then like one or two will get pushed back, but the rest will still die on top of the core and take it. And that seems to be the majority of what's going on as far as strategy. That, that seems to be the state of the meta for the game. Uh, I'm still collecting, I'm, I'm playing sur more circular games than I have been and being on the lookout for these things and I've come up with some ideas to try and sort of fix the game qu play quality of this stuff. Uh, one of the ideas is I can remove the ability to load ammunition into particular kinds of buildings. So I might remove the ability to put uh, ammo into swarmers with your player unit. I might do that. I might not. But that's an option if it keeps being a problem with no workaround from the other side. Uh, another thing that I might consider doing on the crash damage problem is instead of giving captured hexes uh, a shard, I might give them a foundation or a nucleus. That has consequences that I'm not looking forward to, but it at least gives it something with more hit points and armor that the crash damage is not like, you know, six zeniths dying nearby is enough to kill it. It's just, it's just it, the numbers for what kinds of attacks it takes to crash damage kill a shard is ridiculous. Uh, that is not a perfect fix, and I'd rather have it fixed in like the base game balance instead. Uh, because that would also boost the uh, unit caps for the players by threefold or twofold or some huge number like that. And that would also make very early fistfight games different because then sort of the tier one and two units would need a lot more time to take out cores. Uh, you know, if you're fighting someone that spawned one parcel away, or whatever. Under normal circumstances, I would have tried to take out that purple player spawn. But because the flares are so weak to scatters, I don't want to waste them, and they won't, you know, take that out quickly or easily. Uh, I'll wait until I have some sort of larger, better units to do it. I'm not really paying much attention to the rest of the map either. There's a lot of people, hopefully they're all fighting each other and distracted by each other. Got the Plast, making a little surge, so soon I'll have my own Swarmers. And they're, they're really stupidly easy to set up at this point also. So... All those flares for one scatter, not a great trade-off. Another thing that I might do to try and fix something with sort of the relative power of the crash damage is just uh, rem either remove the unit damage nerf, which it's set to 50%, or also do a building damage nerf. And if I do a building damage nerf, then swarmers would not be as good as they are. But every other turret would also not be as good as this. But that might be reasonable, because, you know, instead of one scatter killing a fleet of flares, it would take two, which is, you know, fairly reasonable. I mean, it's not like, uh, it's not like air care turrets where, you know, you need, like, four breaches to kill anything that you would actually care to, to kill with it. Yeah, the map is looking really dense with other people taking space. There's like four or five other players with significant holdings at this point. Uh, another thing that you need to be doing in version 7 Circulo is internal defense. 
Uh, you can't just have forts along your border anymore because, you know, people can take their air units and fly between forts or around edges or whatever. Uh, we still have the life support attrition, which I think is doing a lot to help the gameplay quality so far. Uh, there is still a semblance of having sort of borders and internal space that you don't need to defend as much, but just because it's more expensive to attack an internal economy hex by flying behind lines doesn't mean it's impossible. So people still, you know, stockpile a bunch of air units and fly back in there and can make gains with it. And in, in some cases, it can be very damaging to lose a core in that way because then they'll follow it up with the autofill swarmers and you can't take that back and rebuild everything. Maybe in that case, you would want to target the player unit and then handle the rest of the stuff, but hmm, whatever. All right, so that was Zeniths. I'm starting, okay, yeah, let me put up some shields. Uh, shields still protect things from bombs, although not crash damage. And, you know, tiny little brain dead amount of defense. I have to worry about orange to my south and Artie is to the southwest. I should be putting these on all of my cores, but I think I'm gonna end up not doing that. Yeah, another thing that ends up in this game is uh, I'm playing denser than I like to because, you know, so many players, there's not much easy to expand space. And if you take it, then you're gonna, you know, draw aggression from people. Uh, and with so many other people, maybe, maybe don't pick fights before you're in a stronger position. Uh, so I need to be playing denser and I'm not necessarily doing it. Also, uh, this is my old schematic library. I haven't done any updating uh, for V6. You know, loaders are better and some of the ratios have changed and I haven't put in the work to update some of that stuff. It looks like things still work well enough to be functional. So, you know, maybe I won't ever put in that effort. I'm not sure. Uh, Pyrotite factories, that was one of the big changes. They used more sand than they used to. So there are certain schematics I have with embedded pyrotite factories that need, uh, or that could benefit from being modified. I already got rid of all my forts because all the forts are built for uh, defending against, you know, command center attack or air attack with air bait. Air bait no longer exists. Uh, can just forget about that completely. I, I do not think that real-time strategy is a good thing for Circula, but it's what we're stuck with. And I would rather not custom build the server software to do things, uh, to change parameters if I don't have to. I know how to do it, uh, and I've done it in the past, but hopefully I don't have to resort to that. One of the things that I might choose to do with that is uh, remove unit crash damage completely. Uh, that would be an improvement, definitely. Uh, I can't change unit statistics uh, because that doesn't sync well between clients and servers because there's no good system for that in the base game. Uh, like if I started changing unit statistics as far as the server is concerned, then it would just cause it would cause desyncing issues as the clients think something different happened from what actually happened. Yeah, things are real crowded. 
So this fallen player here, this is annoying. I don't want them doing that. That orange I should probably take. Oh, I have taken. So I should put some defense there. Uh, move this way. Probably have a few Zeniths by now, but pretty sure Zeniths, in addition to the 50% unit, also got some sort of nerf from version 6 to version 7 that also makes them not quite as overpowering as they used to be. Yeah, look, look, yeah. Just a few scatters to take out that whole thing. But yeah, a lot of this is me just getting a sense for how relatively powerful different things are. Uh, uh, there's Artie putting a defensive structure to the left there that I'll probably need to put more defense in this spot to not worry about that. Uh, that flare factory, I put it there wrong. The coal and the sand air blast should be reversed so that those steam generators are actually getting coal. That's a derp. If you want that, you can't have it. And I can't really... Oh, it's going badly. Oh, save. So, so damaged that core, just from a few flares. Now it is safe from flares. Have to be on the lookout for instances of Eric instincts causing me to do things on Serpulo, and if that is or is not useful. And old version 6 game instincts kicking in and doing things. The, the same size and composition of attacks definitely have very different outcomes than they used to in version 6. Yeah, let's get some more silicon, huh? not doing all select like the G command thing yet really works well so G select is nice but there's still reason to use rally because it doesn't give an order to polys and that leaves them set to whatever they were set as there's a spot where Artie took a core for me which is, is not something that I'm happy about. Well, I can pull the polys over here and use their healing ability to get the attacks to be stronger. And, you know, why, why ever build a unit repair tower if you can just you know, have your polys do it? Swarmers around it. It's going to take a significant force to actually go in and take. So all of those are going to be a pain to take. Oh, my, the the purple on my left. Uh, one of the things that I noticed in a different game is there were some players that were feeding pyrotite ammo into swarmers, and it was trash. It was super ineffective. Surprisingly so. It is very bizarre, the power difference between putting Surge and Pyrotite into Swarmers. Which suggests that it's not necessarily the Swarmer itself that's the problem, it's something to do with the, the ammo tu tuning. Swarmers probably should either not do two lightning bolts, maybe only one, but really what they probably need is some sort of uh, it doesn't act as a full area of effect. It does a 
fixed amount of damage that it spreads evenly amongst everything that it hits. Like most games that have a chain lightning concept will do like for each additional chain that the lightning hits, it's doing some amount less damage. Uh, and that should probably be the case here. Otherwise, like stacking all those area of effect lightning bolts in the high rate of fire just melts the spearhead of whatever sort of order of units is streaming towards it. That should be a plasma belt from that titanium there. This, yeah. In case he thinks he wants to attack this way, I want to discourage that. The swarmers. Uh, another thing that's missing from the swarmer equation is. Sort of conceptually, the idea is that they use a lot of ammo to do what they do. Okay, good and fine, but it's not actually doing that in the game. Uh, there have been multiple instances where I've set up the, the ducts to waste ammo from Surge Swarmers, uh, you know, getting six, nine, twelve Swarmers constantly firing at something that they can't kill. And I doesn't actually consume enough ammo to make a difference in any of the cases that I've seen. So they're not actually using nearly enough ammo to justify the, the amount of power that they have. That's a, another thing that might fix the balance on it. Well, but it probably wouldn't fix the balance on it, it would just cause people to build additional surge factories because the concentrated power coming out of those, if it's if you try to balance it based on a economic thing, then people will just build to satisfy that economic constraint. Although the way it is now, you don't even have to intentionally build up for that particular constraint. Uh, you can just go the way you are normally, drop one surge factory or two surge factories, and have plenty of surge to, to keep the swarmer is firing. I think by the end of this game, I was not sure if I actually had fun or not. Uh, and potentially been doubting, like, do I want to keep running a circular server? Was that worth it? Since then, I've probably come around to, well, I'll keep it anyway. It's nice to be running two servers because if the game on one is bad, I can go see if the game on the other one is good. Uh, being able to play both of them is kind of nice. Although I need more circular practice to come up to speed. I'm still a copper. That's awful. Mm -hmm. At least I'm lead on Eric here. Stuff in the south that I want to be worried about. Um, a lot of people don't really take advantage of the more specific things you can do with RTS, like fly around behind and hit these power plants instead of going near the scatters. And that turns off those lancers, and then I can send ground units in. Um, salvos, not particularly great. That's Zenith's over there. He could take this if he wanted to. He's probably gonna try it at some point. Although he's in a bad position because he's probably got hostility on all directions while I only have like two or three that I really need to worry about. And another thing that I'm noticing the the version 7 circular is it's a lot easier to push the uh, 
to the server frame rate part. Usually in, in version 6, maybe 1 in 10 games, we get to the size where there were good players with uh, wide fort trenches in all directions and would drop. You know, normally the server process is at 60 frames per second and some of those largest games that you know people had corvuses shooting back and forth and giant zenith blobs and uh, the huge unbreakable forts in 10 wide lines uh, you know that I think the record for the lowest server frames per second is like six which makes for a pretty uh, like rubber bandy sort of game watching units go around but here it seems to be a lot easier to get to that point uh, this game is probably going to go down to 15 or 10 frames per second and a lot of that is just uh, it's so easy to amass flares and do things with them uh, more than you used to with the, the air spam uh, a, a bit of a meta developed while I was away, the, I don't necessarily think is optimal, but it's what the people that have been playing the most have been using, so other people have been copying it, and that's how a meta spreads in an environment like this, especially with people like seeing what you lost to, and then you copy their schematics. Now, there's a lot of people that are doing, just put everything into your core, and then build everything with unloaders. So there's sand going into cores, and coal going into cores, and then they're uh, silicon schematics are just unloading everything, and their graphite schematics are unloading everything. Uh, I don't, I don't really think that's the best way to go, but that's what the people have been doing. That approach is a lot more of a that's a ranked mindset kind of thing to do. Uh, ranked has a lot more put everything in your core and then do everything with unloading. Although I haven't tried the self-contained unit factories like I used to use on old sim. So it'd be like a zenith factory where you put it on a coal and a sand and you feed in two belts, one lead and one titan. And everything is self-contained to get the unit factory going. That might be viable again. Well, the thing that stopped me from using that was when the overdrive domes uh, became more dominant. And you can't really overdrive dome a schematic like that. It's got a lot of lower efficiency components that you're probably better off having like a high efficiency piece and then a dome and then feed the output of it into other things. Alright, so Artie's in the middle, there's another stronger player to the left, and the largest size player is to the far south. I've chosen to make some ground units. Uh, in version 7, Serpulo, ground units kind of suck. They're just too slow to uh, react to anything quickly. And if you use them to attack, then they're so slow that it's easy to respond to them and build stuff before they get to wherever they might be going. And they're not great as a defensive measure either because of the 50% unit damage nerf. So still need a lot of them. They're sort of reasonable for hitting people that think they're safe by putting scatters down. Like, the scatters aren't doing anything to the ground units, it's all the lancers. That was all a bunch of crap right there. Hardy moved in on me. See a lot of explosions there, so he, he paid a lot to do it. Hopefully I have a st enough stuff around that I can just take that back. All right, come on up here, Cap. Are you gonna help me watch this game? Thank you. That's the thanks for your input. 
Yeah, so all this is easy to rebuild and it looks like I got a good sort of cost efficiency of not spending much time or resources in putting a defense and he needed to blow a lot of units to dislodge it. As long as I have sort of defense in depth of that style and enough stuff to retake the pieces and rebuild the, the little thing, then it works decently. Uh, but if he stockpiles enough to get through that and then into economy stuff, then it gets a lot harder to, to rebuild. And yeah, so the flares come in, one swarmer gets a bunch of that. But, huh? So, yeah, one swarmer protected against all that stuff. And the unit crashes didn't quite take it. The men projector there might have been what made the difference, I'm not sure. It may end up being the case that upgrading your cores to foundations or even nucleuses ends up being necessary to protect from that sort of thing. This orange player is doing things I don't like. Alright, that was handled. I'll probably go around in a bit, uh, putting a little bit more defense on all of these internal cores. I ran myself out of titanium. That's the problem here. A uh, big part of that was probably uh, the surge factory. I think I put a dome down there too. And there is extra danger of running out of titanium because my primary power plants are core unloading titanium to make the fusion generator coolant stuff. So if I have no titanium for too long, then my power plants are going to shut down and I'm going to be in brownout. That orange player is just two hexes right there. I should finish them off and get my vengeance. Titanium is at least leveling off now. Yeah, that should have been a plast belt. So, ground units, go in there and kill that stuff. Stay away from those lancers if we can, but they're not. Yeah, come on, come on. Set some stuff on fire. That's nice. Quasars are real-time strategy commands, and quasars are especially weird because they have that, uh, the recoil. They fire their guns and they back up a little bit, so it makes them really strange to position them. Oh, here comes Arnie again. Come on. Play off. I'm not, I'm not bothering him. He's the one doing this. He should be worried about what's going on to his south. That also caused me to pull away from stuff I had going on in the south as far as finishing off that orange player. I think he's kill a bunch of these poly here. Get that crash damage. Do it. 
taking advantage of that crash damage. Finally drive them off. Another thing that I've noticed that is not is annoying from B7 is the polys rebuilding stuff does not necessarily connect the power all the way back to its pre-state. So if you lose a hex and then you expect your polys to rebuild it, then you will have to spare some attention to pan back to it and make sure that the power nodes have been connected. It's a little bit weaker. Fortress. All right, so even more ground unit stuff. We'll see how that goes with the nerfed unit shots. Probably not great, but if I let uh, a large enough blob of those build up, then they'll probably still be able to do something useful. Good against Lancers, not good against Swarmers. But it also lets you do things like stand in the edge of a hex and artillery barrage economic stuff in neighboring hexes. Like I could walk that over and shoot some of Artie's stuff if I wanted to. But I've also got a bad habit of leaving or commencing an attack before I've built up enough units and then you know only being able to get halfway and not finish the job. Yellow, pink, and green teams are still strong players at this point. Alright, yeah, now I'm out of Thorium. That is not super fatal. I don't have anything that's unloading thorium, but it does slow down building. Like I should probably, yeah. If I want a thorium factory power plant, then I'm gonna need a lot more of that. Uh, if I put down the skeleton, then I can at least start working on it now and incrementally get to it as uh, more accumulates. Those drills have to finish and start feeding stuff in. And this thing makes a ton of power, like 28k or something. So I'm not nearly as desperate for power as that full thing can provide. So a little bit will be useful and helpful. Now if I had two or three times as much space and had it filled up with unit factories and economic stuff, then I would want that power, but being stuck in really six economic hexes is limiting my draw. Now, tactically and strategically, I could be fighting Artie and pushing to the left, but I'm not because I'd rather he were paying attention to the south where the player with the current strongest position is. And that's also why when I'm expanding, I'm trying to head for the south also. So that means pushing orange out of the way and hitting stuff down there. 
but I don't really have great production at this point. Uh, domes on two tetradibs each of Quasar and Fortress, and two tetradibs of Zenith. That's that's not really gonna produce enough units to big big attack big attacks quickly. I can make a big attack infrequently, but that's about it. And I'm out of silicon. And since I haven't made fort schematics yet, then these cut and paste forts I've been doing are actually locking off a lot of the uh, core freedoms that I use to put down economic pieces. Like, it'd be great to put another four crucible set up of silicon and fix it that way. But I don't really have any good gaps to actually put those down without tearing down stuff that's already here or, you know, pushing stuff out of the way on these defensive spots. So what are we going to do about all those Lancers, huh? Are we going to ignore them? Is that really the way to go? No, let's uh, try to use the Fortress range on them. That'll, that'll work. Make room on this coal patch. Make a little bit more silicon. a good way to put it into that close core there because there's so many unloaders and exit points that the belt would be next to. I guess if I used an armored conveyor, but I actually never really use armored conveyors at all. Alright, Fortress is handling the lancers nicely and the, the shields taking the rest that they might slip into. Salvos with thorium in them are going to be trouble. This method probably isn't going to actually work to take this core. It'll just uh, wear down those units. But I can walk around them and get some, some other stuff. Maybe if I approach it from the bottom where there's only two salvos, that might work a little better. Nah, not really. I can get that power plant though. What else is there to worry about? Hmm. I was attacked here. I barely even noticed. Something fought it off. Hmm, those players are arguing about the strength of the life support attrition. Uh, I have no plans to change it right now. I'm pretty happy with the half-life of a unit away from friendly cores lasting about 30 seconds or so. I actually did the math on it at some point, it was something like that. Uh, so it is expensive to void air units and attack a, a distant target, but it's not impossible. So that makes a more interesting strategic decision whether to do it or not. Green has got a ton of stuff now. Like the entire bottom three rows are taken by green. 
the green teamed player, not green the player who isn't here. I haven't actually seen him on Circulo. I also haven't been watching Circulo. He's been doing more Heracure stuff than I have seen. All right, there come some flares. I see them coming. The attrition wears them down a bit. We're gonna have a hard time shooting that. Dropping shields to protect things is pretty effective. It looks like some auto-filling those hails, which isn't actually working. Yeah, people are still complaining about auto-filling, but I've yet to see it do something that isn't counterable. Trying it out, attacking this core from both sides. See if that goes through, but there's a there's a lot of salvos. Ugh, but I took it out. Alright. That's nice. So finally got rid of orange. Move my defense a little bit further cut and paste defense the bad way. At least 2,000 of all the resources. Not great for a 50 minute game. You want to be rich at this point and I am not rich. things out of the way to actually be able to build here. Flares! Fair enough. So this is trying out... Each flare is 15 silicon. If I can get somebody swarmers shooting surge at flares, then maybe I can waste their ammo and run them out. I have since learned that that doesn't work. But that's what I'm trying to do with those flares. Uh, another thing that you can see, normally all eight of those flare factories would actually be able to be fed by an unloader. But at this point, Point, the server process has been running continuously for 11 days and there there is a bug I don't know where it is it's some sort of performance bug or in the category of memory leaks or something like that where when a server runs for a very long time on the order of weeks without being restarted then the efficiency of buildings diminishes. Uh, it definitely affects unloaders. It might affect some other things too. Uh, it might be something to do with ticks or framework or, or whatever. I don't actually know. Uh, I've never seen anybody report something that sounds like it, and I'm not sure that there are any servers that operate in the same manner where the thing is left running continuously and doesn't do any restarting at all. Like, some of the other servers might restart things between games, and that might clear this out and prevent it from happening. It might also be sort of a size of the games thing. You know, if you lose one byte per unit or bullet or whatever it thinks causes uh, the problem. But anyway, my flare factory is running at half capacity of what it should be because the server hasn't been restarted in a while. I think later in the day I'll kick everyone off and restart it and fix that. And I need to be you know, doing that once every week or two weeks or something like that. Uh, what was that? 
That was my T4 schematic. So that's either going to be quads or Anton Bres. Sort of put more beef in these attacks. Maybe draw some of the Sword of Fire away from the weaker stuff. Uh, if I'm going to put that down, I'm going to need more Placidum and more Titanium. And work on some of those things. It is potentially an option to... Yeah. All right. So the intent of that attack was the memory from V6 that if you hit an attached vault or container to a core, then it will blow up and do area of effect damage and then blow up the core. That doesn't seem to happen in V6 anymore. Uh, so that's not really a thing anymore. But I am now doing some damage to the green glare, which is nice, but I got a lot of swarmers that I need to do, so I need to do a bunch more damage down here. And I need to do a lot more unit production to sort of build up for this size of attack big enough to actually accomplish those. And while I'm going this way, he is killing Artie. And that's sort of the last major distraction before he turns on me. So I don't really have a lot of time to wait for army to build up doing this. Oh, that's a Vela. Uh, that's an interesting choice. We'll see how that goes. Probably not great. But I'm also out of titanium, so whatever. Two of those should put things back to good again. And waiting for ground units to actually get down here to help with these attacks. That was a lot of extra time. Oh, so yeah, a power problem. That's nice. Well, it might have been that he had some power lines going through that hex that I took out, maybe? Hmm. I didn't pay attention to what was actually in there when I destroyed it. My old V6 instincts are saying that, oh, now that I'm past the fort line, I can just go down there and mop up. And that's not how people are playing anymore. There's now still a bunch of swarmers in all of these places down there, and they can have more added to them. A power plant would be good to hit, but it's got a shit ton of swarmers all around it. Now my poly is going through that lighter green. That's probably a waste of some sort. that way. That's an easy target. Swarmers, swarmers, swarmers. Should be using ducts to empty those out. Flares, really? Well, hmm. Flares empty ammo out of swarmers, so at least there's that much. And that is silicon. Looks like they're starting to hit me on the upper left. That'll be a problem.
you know, there's these fort pillar things that people are starting to put down now, which are just like four swarmers, a tsunami, a shield, no walls whatsoever. A little bit of coolant in there. That's probably not as good gameplay for walls to be completely irrelevant. Uh, one of the potential balance fixes that I could do, uh, if I diminish building damage by 50% to match what unit damage already is, that would weaken the swarmers. Uh, that would put them on par with sort of uh, sort of the net effect of that is the, the time to kill for unit versus building matchups increases instead of just being heavily skewed towards uh, buildings the way it is now. Uh, but it would drastically increase the survivability of all non-damage uh, dealing buildings. So all of the economy buildings would be more durable and walls would be more durable. So hypothetically, that as a balance change would make walls more valuable, but it does nothing to fix unit crash damage, which is probably one of the actual core problems. Uh, yeah, another thing that seems to be the case is that unit damage multiplier does not affect unit crash damage. And who knows if that's on purpose or an implementation accident. But with unit crash damage being a major problem, it's not something that can be fixed in that way. All right. Well, there goes my unit factory stuff. Bunch of flares there. I don't really have much of anything stockpiled. And he's going to be doing building versus building at me. Not respectable. I could walk my Vela in there and shoot down some flares. That's fun. What the hit. Uh, so now I got to put down a bunch of firefighting stuff. That's annoying. I got to reconnect all this power. And I got to somehow accumulate units to get back in there. Uh, in a eureka moment coming out here, uh, look at how these swarmers continue to shoot at belts and nothing happens. Hopefully that's not uh, some sort of weird sinking issue. Hopefully what I'm seeing is what the server thinks is actually happening. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Put down belts, the building versus building stuff shoots the belts instead. Some units in there somehow. And he's actually doing further attacks with those flares that he had up there. Here's another big economy hex. It doesn't cut off my power supply, but that was another power plant and silicon factory. It's not built into it, so I can take that back. Maybe rebuild into it. The Things are going badly at this point. So he's he's got a huge amount of production in the entire south of the map, and we need working against many more units than I can produce. If I actually go power out, then my main power plant is going to lose its coolant and blow up. He's got no more units in there, and there is a lot of damage on the core that's actually anchoring that. So I don't yet actually realize that the major factor is unit crash damage. I could be sending 
flares or something to hit that chord from different directions and actually you know, take it out relatively easily. The, the Vela, even the Vela doesn't stand up to, to Swerner as well. It does do some damage and that draws some polys up and I can I can shoot at some polys. Maybe those should be rebuilding. What are those even doing? Give them a command. Rebuild? Sure. Flares do absolutely nothing to force warmers. Well, it's on fire. Maybe that's useful. It's got no power. It's not getting healed. Vela versus Cyclone and Swarmer doing poorly, and it's gone. Building, huh? Yeah, there's a there's another instance of rebuilding not actually connecting the power lines. And this was the one that had my poly factory in it. So now it, it it looks like he's put on full assault. The yellow player to the left still has a sizable army and defensive perimeter and is not being eaten out the way that I am. He's just going to mass produce units and they will dumbly full assault at me and eventually that'll probably wear in, who knows. Uh, I don't think he'll go until he actually, you know, concentrates some command on doing it. And the rebuilding is going slowly. Killing my flares. There's one missing belt. So these are out of ammo. Baylor can actually shoot at them. Even with no belt, it's still continuing to fire for a long, long, long time. Uh -huh. Power plant rebuilt. big thing I'm missing now is Plastinum. So no, I'm not going to be able to put the crucibles back down or any of those overdrives. There. 
Yeah, let's finally get this. Maybe? Yes! Still not gonna be great at rebuilding, but that's something at least. So much stuff is missing. even have any oh all right so there's some missing belts down there that need hooked back up maybe a better shield too or something Get the plastinum coming back in You probably turn off the T4 factory to make the rebuilding go faster, but I didn't think of it at the time. It will be interesting when something finally happens with Yellow on the side. Uh, my guess at this point is he will attack with the large army he's accumulated over a long time with fewer factories and he will take a few forts and then the attrition of taking those forts and you know going against the defensive order. And he'll have no army and like three more hexes that he can't build into fast enough. And then green will just sweep back up through the whole thing. That's what's in the future for yellow. Factory's still working. That silicon factory is fixed. This flare factory is hopeless being on the edge like that. Oh, that's jammed with a little sand on the the exit of the plastinum belt. Alright, there we go. Threw that sand on the ground. Go on, grab it. Some more swimmers here would be valuable. There's a fire to put out. give individual orders like that, but with full assault on, they'll just be cleared in another you know, 29 seconds or whatever. It takes... It did. Yeah, alright, so we just took that hex above here, which is going to break the power link. So a lot of that might as well not even be there anymore. Stuff is sort of going to be good enough there.
is really ticking a lot longer than it needs to. Well, well I'm done. Yay. And now I grouse about not having fun while going through that struggle. There's a fight to watch. Yellow to the core. And spent the entire army doing it. And Polly's take it back. Liquid container chain. That's interesting. Corpus factory there. Oh, so much mess. Now this is going to be far enough away stuff that the commands to send those on attack end up not working. Same problem as with the error cursor server and distant unit commands. They're large games. So they've wasted enough time, the people that are left, that we're at the Serpulo endgame. So at 90 minutes, every player core starts spawning Ant Umbras, and every team has full assault locked on. So this should force the game to eventually end, no matter what the state of things is. It is an advantage to have more cores at this point. Having defense up to kill the Antumbra before it can approach helps you out. But you know, there is no more stalling at this point. the game. This is very messy. Yeah, now that they've through this fort, there's pretty much not a whole lot left at all.
Alright, getting real close to the end. Trade a few cores back and forth. Is that the last one? There it is! Game over! 45% progress to the next tier.